And welcome back to Across the Board here with E and the Colonel on Hawk Radio, hawkradio.org. And again, you know, nothing but bangers here on the uh, show. We bring you the best guests possible on the planet. Right now, one of the top guitarists and just songwriters uh, of, of a generation, any generation. <laughs> Ron Bumblefoot Thaw is on the line with us. Ron, are you there? Yeah. How you doing? What's up, man? Uh, things are good. Things are lovely. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, you know, we were just talking off the air about this. Um, most people know you from Guns N' Roses. You're the current you know, lead guitarist for Guns N' Roses. We'll get into that in a second. We are huge fans of yours because, and even Kat Perkins, when we spoke to her, didn't know mm-hmm. this. You wrote the theme song to MXC. <laughs> talk a little bit about that. Um, that's actually a song called Puke. And- Sweet name for a song. So, uh, little song. How, <laughs> how did you, uh, what were the thoughts behind that song? And, and we've never heard the lyrics, so tell us what the song's originally about and then how it came to be on uh, MXC. You got a pretty good idea, though. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a love song about, about, being, about liking a girl so much that, that it makes you sick and you, and you puke. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it wasn't, was it a, actually, no, wait, actually it wasn't that. It was about like, despising someone to the point that it makes you puke. No, is that, isn't that the same exact thing? Ago. I wrote the song in like 2003. <laughs> so how did that come to be on MXC, which is obviously the American version of the Japanese show Takeshi's Castle, and guys dub it over in, uh, in English, and it's absolutely one of the funniest shows to ever air. But, you, you know, how did... Yeah, how did wacky show. Yeah, yeah, so how did Puke come to be Firebrand, which is the instrumental version? Um, it was the... Um, they contacted the publishing company, was, uh, you know, just, I guess, pitching songs and just making them available to TV shows and movies and everything, and and they wanted that one and the instrumental one just to give it a different name instead of calling it Puke. The publishers said, you know, let's, let's just come up with another name. We're going to call it Firebrand. I'm like, yeah, whatever, just go ahead. <laughs> and, and that was it. When you're doing your writing now, what goes through your mind? Do you write the music first? Do you write the guitar parts, or do you write the lyrics? Most of the time is the music. I'll come up with just some, like, rhythm. I mean, it could really be anything. It could start with some drum beat that has just these weird hits and weird spots that makes you just want to kind of make a riff built on that, and next thing you know, you, you have this whole concept for the song, this theme that you're going to build off of, and then you come up with words that fit the feeling that you're getting from the song. Again, this is Across the Board with Ian the Colonel. We're on the line with Ron Bumblefoot Thaw from uh, Guns N' Roses, and uh, we're going to talk about, I guess we'll get into it now, talk a little bit about the uh, the guitars you did on the track Reach Down. We just had Cat Perkins on the line uh, you know, from Scarlet Haze, and, and you were right. heavy into that. So talk a little bit about how you got hooked up with her and uh, you know what you did on the album there. Yeah, Cat is just cool as, as can be. She's just She's great. Um, how did that hook up? It was the label, Dirtbag Records. I've known those guys for years, and they're like, hey, we got this song, and we think you'd be perfect for it. Would you want to lay some some guitar on it? I was like, sure. Bring it over and, and listen to it. And I was like, yeah, I could definitely uh, do this. And, and just kind of felt it around the vocals and, and just tried to make something just kind of sleazy and squealy and and something that would sort of go with the vibe and that's how the uh, colonel likes his women's so that's perfect exactly she he likes them sleazy it's and squealy squeal yeah why not like a pig and uh <laughs> perfect fantastic this always ends up backfiring on me thanks i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> now Obviously, you, you've got your things going on with Guns N' Roses. You're with them as well. But you've released numerous solo acts as well. You've got different, all kinds of solo projects you've worked on, including uh, an acoustic album that was your latest release as a solo act. D- are there any more plans for more solo albums, or do you plan on trying to stick with uh, you know, groups like Guns N' Roses and try to find your way that way, or do you want to keep it um, real with them? This year I plan on releasing a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm just going to do it a song at a time, though, because it's... Right now, it's so hard to find a chunk of time where I can really just uh, focus and dedicate to one thing. So I'm just taking it in little pieces and doing it that way and just keeping a constant simmer going. So actually, last month, I released a song. Uh, It was a cover of an old Motown song from the Four Tops called Bernadette. Uh Uh-huh. I love that song. Yeah, so you got to hear this version. i got to send that to you. It's very uh, sort of, I guess, more punky and 
heavy and so what I'm doing with all of these songs is I'm doing three different things with them. I'm putting them out in all the high res, you know, uh, Apple Loft lists, uh, FLAC, AAC, MP3, right. MP3 HD, WAV, all of that stuff. Um, <laughs> so I'm doing all the the high res uh, formats, but then I'm also doing the instrumental version for people that just want to sing it and not hear me cackle through it. <laughs> uh, and then I'm doing something that would appeal more to guitar players, which is I'm doing a transcription where I write out the entire lead guitar part of the the whole song, wow. the solos, everything, and it has the uh, tablature, the musical notation, the fingers, the picking, every little detail. That's incredible. And you get that with a backing track. That's the whole mix minus that lead guitar part, so that you learn it, you play along with it, and. Uh, and then the other thing I'm doing is for studio geeks like myself is I put out the stems to the song so that you can take the, oh, God. the mix of the drums, just yeah, the bass, sick. rhythm guitar, lead guitar, vocals, back and vocals, load it into your multi-track software and play with the mix, make your own little versions or edits or whatever you want to do. Or even if you just want to hear what each naked track sounds like without everything else there, to hear all the little grunts and groans and little things. We'll have to definitely get a, a hold of a copy of that as well. And then I'm I'm just learning guitar now, uh, Ron. So nice. that'll be cool to, to look at the tablature and that kind of stuff. We'll have to get you know copies of that. Cool, it's pretty man. sweet. Yeah, all that stuff is you know you can find it on the web anywhere. Just go to either my Facebook page or my my website, which is all just Google Bumblefoot and you find me. So yeah, it's uh, a <laughs> bumblefoot.com or facebook.com slash bumblefoot or anything dot com slash bumblefoot. And, yeah. You're on you're on Twitter as well, I know because uh, Twitter, we, yes I am. We we I just followed you. we just started following you on Twitter as well, so that way <laughs> uh we could check that out. You've cool. worked with numerous people throughout your career as well. Um you've worked with uh Matthias Eklund, you've also worked with Dweezil Zappa, uh Ty Tabor of uh King's X and Jordan Rudis of Dream Theater, one of my favorite bands of all times. Nice. What is it like to work with all these people? I think, mean, not to not to sell it short either, but also you were the guitarist for uh, Lita Ford for a while. What is it like <laughs> yeah. to work with all these people? I mean, how does that make you feel like your it, career has accomplished? It feels good. I mean, you know, the whole thing about making music, and you know, ultimately it's about having a connection between you and other people, and and and. To you know, when you hook up with all different musicians and and different types of music makers, you know, I mean, you just it's a great feeling to just make all those connections. It just broadens you as a person. It it adds to who you are, and you learn something from everything you do. And yeah, so doing that kind of stuff, I love stepping out of my comfort zone and playing with someone that I wouldn't normally do it with or someone that just totally kicks ass that I could really get inspired by and learn things from. Now, you've also had this year, and just this is another thing too, this year will mark the 10th anniversary of that tragic day in New York City, uh, September 11th, and you had an album that was originally going to be called, um, uh, it was going to be called Guitar Sucks, and yeah. you wanted to, you went ahead and renamed the album 9 11 and you also donated all the proceeds from the album to the American Red Cross. Yeah. You're such you're you. We talked about this earlier in the interview, where you're such a you give back to that New York area community. What was the response when you decided to rename your album this and give the proceeds to the American Red Cross? Oh, it's hard to remember what was the response. I mean, years ago, yeah. It was. I think my mind was more on just like what was actually going on in the world than than my own album but you know i think people i don't think people i'm hoping that people got the album because they actually liked the album but if they did it just because they wanted to donate you know that's just as appreciated right, right. um you know that was back when people bought cds so so you know, i was able to donate a couple of grand that's yeah, a good point. Good. Yeah. Uh, now, who are some of your favorite? I mean, obviously, you are in the forefront of uh, of guitar vir virtuosos these days. I mean, you're not just a guy who plays some chords. I mean, you know, you're progressing guitar playing. Who else do you see out there as as people that you know you look at and say, "Hey, this guy's good as well," and is is good for where guitar is going? 
Oh, there's so many. Um, I mean, most of them have been doing it for 20 years. Right. Um, let me think. Like, who is some of those people? Well, definitely, like you mentioned, you know, Tia Zeckland. Um, mm. Do you know Guthrie Govan? Name sounds familiar, but I can't he's place a, it right the second. He's an old friend of mine from England, and he's one of the best players you'll ever see. The guy's just amazing and the coolest guy, nicest Let's guy. Let's check him out. Um, Buckethead. You know, right. he's as unique as any guitar player can get, without a doubt. Now, have you ever seen him with his with his mask off? Um, I think so. Yeah. I really? See? I don't think anyone in the world has, right? It's kind of hard. It's huh, interesting. Yeah, it was it was a while ago, like before he joined Guns. Yeah, we had met it. Like we would go to the Nam convention. We met up there. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah. Now what's what's next in the future for uh, for you in the near future? I know you said you're trying to work out everything. Right, is, well, is Guns N' Roses still an active thing? Month. or What I want to be able to get done this month is I want to auction myself off, musically that is. Okay. Um, okay. And <laughs> nobody will want me any other way. <laughs> they don't even want me that way. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I want to auction myself for flood relief. Wow. Because there's so much going on right now and in South America and Australia, mm-hmm. uh, around India, a lot of places and you know these people you know there's like a lot of people i've met in these places and they're telling me stories i know people who's you know like to tell me how their you know their family's home has been destroyed and things like that and you know it becomes very personal so i want to do start doing types of auctions to raise money to go to flood relief to help out with all of that stuff. I mean, I can't go down there and, you know, and bucket water out of people's homes. <laughs> you know, there's not right, much right. And I don't have a, a lot of liquid cash that I could be donating. But if I, the one value I do have on this earth, I guess, is is music. Right. And making music that hopefully somebody's going to want and and whatever they give me for it, I would give it to that. Uh, so I have an idea that I'm working on. That's called A Day with Bumblefoot. This is the auction where okay. all the proceeds are donated to flood relief. I spend a whole day with a person, and they can pick from a list of different things, whatever they want to do that day. Like we could do jamming and a guitar lesson, writing and recording a song together that the person can keep, stick it on iTunes, their album, whatever they want. We can shuffle snow together, <laughs> weather permitting, which I'm sure if it's you know, in the next month, it will be uh, anywhere be in the U.S. To do. Yeah. Um, now, I've talked to some people I know, and another thing is picking out at my favorite all-you-can-eat sushi restaurant with a bunch of penthouse pets. Nice. Um, Fair enough. They can read my stack of obscure metal and guitar-oriented CDs and keep as many as they can grab and hold in 60 seconds. <laughs> what? Um, we can do a photo shoot together. They can sample my vial of 7.1 million Scoville unit capsaicin food additive. Which, nice. Um I'm really like a hot sauce freak. Apparently. And, and a heat freak. And I have the stuff. I mean, let me see. One time I had Axel try it and like his head broke out in like these red lumps. Because <laughs> it was so, like just, the stuff will just destroy you from the inside. Nice. Um, his assistant tried it and her lips actually peeled. What? Um, yeah, and I put this stuff on, on food like it's, you know, salt. Uh, Whoa! Yeah. So you had so, to like build up a tolerance, huh? Yeah, I mean, sure, I you know piss blood sometimes, sometimes <laughs> can't breathe. But is, other than that, I, I love the. Just, um, is is that from the cap station or from you know just being on on tour? Oh, probably from being on tour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's see, what else? What else would be on that list? Um, you know, we could watch a movie, have some popcorn. Uh, they can lay back in vocals on one of my next songs. Like a bunch of things like that, and I'll give them a list of those, like, ten things, they pick five, and then they give me a list of things, and I pick five from that that they want to do, assuming that everything I pick, that I have the option to pick things that are legal and not compromising personally in some way. So all I really got to do is figure out transportation and lodging and the best organization to donate to and stuff like that, and and if... uh, if eBay is the proper home for such an auction or if I should be going elsewhere. But that's the next thing that I want to do. And then after that, I have this little social app thing that I hooked up with this company that's putting out sort of like a Twitter app 
only it still takes it a little farther. You can uh, stream videos and have photos and 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 like a two thousand word limit. And it's something where the company charges like two dollars a month, and you can be you know there's no obligation. You're in it whenever you want to be in it. So there's a bunch of things I want to do with that to make that interesting and, and just offer things that wouldn't be just the usual stuff. So for the people that are on it, uh, one of them, you know, I'll pick a random person and uh, give them like a 30-minute Skype guitar lesson. Another person will get a 10-minute Ask Me Anything phone call, and I'll answer. Nice. Um, <laughs> Which could be bad. Right. <laughs> um, you didn't say answer truthfully. You just said you'd answer. True, true. There's I always, always fine print and everything, question, right? Like, well, how big is yours? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> now, Ron, uh, how... How would people, I guess, when is this auction going to happen? First off, let me say, in all honesty, that this is an incredible gesture by you and an innovative idea. I mean, uh, what celebrity would open themselves up like that? I right. mean, that's incredible that you would do the, just w the first idea you had was amazing. And you've got all of these ideas that somebody could possibly do. Uh, and, and God, I hope you raise millions uh, I for flood relief. It's, it's an incredible idea and you should be 100% backed um, for what you're doing. But when is this going to go down and how can people, I guess, bid and, and get involved in the auction? Do you know? that yet uh not yet right now it's still just all in the planning stage so just so check like, out really soon like i want this to happen really soon so i'm thinking the next couple of weeks and i'll post on you know facebook and twitter and my site and hopefully people will spread that info and it'll get out there and and i'll reach out to whoever i can to make sure as much as many people know that it's going on as possible so people have the option of whether they want to be involved or not you let us know, and we'll absolutely forward that on to all of our listeners as well. Because yeah, well, it sounds like a great idea, and we absolutely support it 110. percent And I, I'm actually going to have to bid. I, I don't know how I'm right. I, I'm, I'm poor, so I don't know how high I can go. But if, I have to throw in some bids for sure. If E and I pool our money together, can we get it? Can we like split half the time? He gets to choose like it, two and a half things, we, and I choose two and a half things. I think if we pull our money together, we might be able to buy a toaster. I think it's about the size <laughs> that we can go. <laughs> it, was, it was a thought, at least. If you just, get the toaster. I'll, I'll, I'll. You could have toast with us. There you go. <laughs> I, I can get some bread and, and even butter if I'm lucky, and, and we can find a way to like really put that toaster to use. And <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. I don't even know what the hell we're talking about now. Man. <laughs> All right, so, uh, you know, Ron, again, man, this is great. Uh, again, you're listening to Across the Board with Ian the Colonel here with Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Um, what's your favorite project that you've been involved with? Uh, you know, again, the, you know, you're in Guns N' Roses now. You're playing a lot of that music. Um, you know, you, you've been involved with Scarlet Hayes and, and all these other bands. What, what is the favorite project, you know, when you look back on your career, and hopefully you've got another 30, 40 years of great music in you, um, what do you think is going to be one of the highlights? 30 or 40. I don't know if I'm going to live that long. <laughs> we'll, we'll, see. we'll see. We can hope. I'm, I'll be lucky if it's 10 or 20, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. My Sauce. favorite. My favorite. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's been so much stuff and everything. You know, you get something out of everything. You know, there's good and there's bad, and, and that's okay. You know, it's supposed to be that way. Right. You know, bad isn't necessarily bad. It's just, you know, something you didn't expect and didn't plan on. Good point. Uh, something to learn from. Well, without a doubt, I would I would have to say definitely playing with Guns N' Roses. Right. Without a doubt. What's and, What's the best song to play then for you? I mean, um, you're one of two lead guitarists, but you know what? What do you like to to sit up really there and play? Three. We should not exclude Mr. Richard Fortas. Okay. Right. I mean, that guy is so ridiculously talented. Wow. I mean, if you just like spend 10 minutes backstage with him and a guitar the amount of knowledge that guy has is astounding mm. i mean he could he's like a walking history book of of rock music and guitar and and it's insane wow so but if you were to pick a, a favorite song it, you know guns and roses or, or any band anything that you've written it could be puke you know what's what's your favorite not not that the fans necessarily get something out of but yours to play what feels good to the fingers and to your ears oh that's a tough one that's a real tough one. thanks that's how we do it here on across the board i think <laughs> well i might have to break it down let me see go if for it gun stuff i would have to say the song shackler's revenge 
all yes. the Chinese because there's a lot of uh, fretless and fretted and swishing back and forth while singing all these the harmonies and everything and it keeps you real busy and that keeps me out of trouble wow. <laughs> um, so that's one it's just a cool rocking song good live song and and I feel like I get to uh, add a lot to it when we play it so so I feel like I serve some purpose up there <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me see what else as far as my stuff I mean I love that last acoustic album I did just because vocally uh, I got to, to sing rather than just trying to push my voice over the music right there was a lot of room for being dynamic with it and that was cool uh, what is my favorite I don't know I mean my favorite thing is probably just sitting around watching TV with a guitar in my hand and playing along with every commercial and <laughs> TV show and whatever comes on my wife just starts laughing like how do you know how to play that <laughs> you just go with it right yeah <laughs> well then what's your favorite commercial to play how about that oh uh, let's see favorite commercial you're a New York guy I don't know what plays up in your area probably the same stuff I'm trying to think of what commercials come on that I play along with I usually don't think about it it just kind of happens uh definitely like playing you know the theme to the Simpsons comes on nice uh what else what else you know the Daisy Sour Cream song? You know, I hate that song. <laughs> I don't know if you play <laughs> With a dollop of days. I'm oh, sorry. It's just it's what my mind... You said TV and commercials, and I hate that. It's and what don't my, you find that the ones you hate are the ones that stick in your head yeah, the most? Yeah, yeah. They're haunting, Like, Ron. every time I'm listening to the radio drive and this song... Um, what was it? One is the seven cars for a kid. That was it. One eight 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 or one eight seven. I think it's one eight eight eight. One eight 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 cost for kids. <laughs> one eight 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 cost for kids. Yeah, donate yeah. your car today. I hated it so much that I donated my car. <laughs> did you really? I did. It worked. Yeah. Nice. You I'm gave into him. If, if there's the one song that gets stuck in my head, it's the one from the Apple iPad commercial that doom 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 doom. That's doom, one doom. you need to play. Yeah. <laughs> that would that be fantastic. One. Ron, I'll tell you what, man, you know, we could, we could have you on every week. This has been great, and, uh, you know, it will, I apologize we have to cut it short. You know, we, this is, I could talk to you for another couple hours, I'll, I'll tell you. So uh, we'll have to check, out, check in with you in a little bit when this uh, next project drops, and uh, definitely love to talk to you again. We appreciate you being on with us today, and uh, our fans will definitely we'll keep you uh, apprised as to the, the auction and every, all the projects uh, going on with Ron Bumblefoot. Though. Ron, thanks a lot, man. Well, that's great. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. And uh, definitely email me. I want to send you that song. I want to send you puke. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Want to send us puke? Sweet. All right. That's the coolest thing ever. Uh, so Colonel's actually going to shoot that email out now, I think, and uh, we'll get that. And we'll get that on the air. So, again, this has been Across the Board with Ian the Colonel here on Hawk Radio, hawkradio.org.